सो नाउ लेट्स सी वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कोड्स डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ कोड दैट आर प्रजेंट इन इंडिया ओके लेट सी वन बाय वन द सुप्रीम बॉडी द सुप्रीम मोस्ट कोर्ट दैट इज योर सुप्रीम कोर्ट ओके सुप्रीम कोर्ट दैट इज द टॉप मोस्ट कोर्ट ऑफ द इंडिया ओके फॉलोड बाय हाई कोर्ट देन देर इज सेशन कोर्ट्स देन कम द After session, there will be additional session court. There will be additional. Remember, there will be additional session courts. Followed by assistant, assistant session court. Followed by chief judicial. magistrate chief judicial magistrate followed by first class judicial magistrate first class jm or second class jm second class judicial magistrate okay so this is the hierarchy okay first one is your supreme court followed by high court followed by session court followed by additional session court followed by assistant session court and then there will be chief judicial cjm that is your chief judicial magistrate followed by first class jm and second class jm okay now let's remember how you will remember guys what is the maximum punishment what is the maximum punishment that can be given okay or what is the maximum fine you have to remember this so maximum punishment all this four court can give is the death sentence okay that sentence is the maximum punishment that can be given by this four courts okay for this these courts just remember 1 3 7 and 10 okay so this will be one year this will be three years this will be seven years and this will be 10 years okay so they can give up to 1 year 3 year 7 year and 10 year okay 10 year of punishment what about fine look here guys just remember 5k and 10k okay rest of them rest of them can give unlimited fine okay they can give unlimited fine okay just second class jm and first class jm will be 5000 10000 and the rest of them can uh, give unlimited fine one more thing supreme court and high court are the appellate court appellate court so there will be all those appealing will be heard okay rest of them are court of trial the rest of them are court of trial court of trial rest of them are court of trial and supreme court and high court will be appellate court okay clear so this this is the types of court that we are having in india okay ground level second class jm then first class jm then cjm that is your chief judicial magistrate followed by assistant session court followed by additional session court followed by session court followed by high court and followed by your supreme court okay supreme court is the topmost body okay next thing some important points that you need to remember here there was a question that which is the lowest court that can give a that can give the death sentence okay so session court can give the session court you already know session court can give death sentence okay but there is a catch what is the catch that death sentence which is given by session court needs to be confirmed by high court so high court need to confirm it 
okay high court need to confirm it now high court has the power he can also commute it commute it or cancel it okay he can commute it or cancel it or uh, decrease the punishment okay so high court has the power power to commute or cancel the death sentence also okay but whenever a session court will give death sentence that should be confirmed by your high court okay clear next thing for example uh, what we are what we were talking about that uh, rahul has murdered someone rahul has murdered neha okay so let's say rahul went to session court session court and session court has given the death sentence session court ne kya kiya they have given the death sentence ab isko bol diya ki khatam okay now he will be confirmed that confirmed by high court if high court is confirming the death sentence then what will happen then what will happen obviously he will be going to die right but he can appeal now look here very important now rahul can appeal to supreme court rahul can go to supreme court okay he can appeal to supreme court about this okay if the session court has given the death sentence then he need, it needs to be confirmed by high court and if high court is confirming the death sentence then what will happen that uh, the accused can uh, go to supreme court okay he can go to supreme court now what will happen supreme court uh, also said okay okay uh, you killed someone and you have to die okay in that case scenario what will happen where it where he can go now okay where he can go now look here guys he can go to president now he will file a mercy petition to the president or governor okay president has a power that is known as amnesty okay president has a special power that is known as amnesty what is the meaning of amnesty that can commute commute the that can commute the punishment or that can can even that can cancel the punishment okay so uh, president has the power to commute the uh, punishment and it has also power to cancel the punishment okay so that is your president okay next thing guys one more case scenario if there is a pregnant lady these are all the questions that has been asked in your exam okay if there is a pre pregnant lady she murdered someone she has murdered someone now the court has given the death sentence okay session court has given the death sentence now high court has a power high court high court can postpone high court high court can postpone the death sentence firstly secondly it can commute commute the uh, death sentence and it can also do one more thing that is it can it can commute the death sentence okay so these are the two things they can do okay and this will be coming under section 416 crpc this is a criminal procedure code this is a criminal procedure code so it will be coming under which section that was the question and it will be coming under section 416 crpc okay criminal procedure code okay next is your juvenile court juvenile court who can go to juvenile court uh, the uh, the accused who is less than 18 years of age okay the accused will be less than 18 years of age will be going to juvenile court will be going to juvenile court 
who will be taking care who will be the magistrate here here the magistrate will be first class judicial magistrate first class judicial magistrate right okay first thing and she should be a female the magistrate should be a female okay in juvenile court the magistrate should be female okay they can use two social workers they can use two social workers but one of them should be female okay both of them are female there's no problem but one should one if both of them are male that is a problem okay one should be female one should be female in the juvenile court okay that is fine all right now let's talk about we have been discussing like uh, discussing about the judicial magistrate and executive magistrate so let's see what is the basic 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 difference between a judicial magistrate and a executive magistrate okay what is the difference between a judicial and a executive magistrate look here guys judicial magistrate write down judicial magistrate and second one is your executive magistrate executive magistrate so who is a judicial magistrate who is a executive magistrate kon kon hoga judicial magistrate will be appointed by judicial remember remember guys the judicial magistrate will be appointed by appointed by the court okay the court will be appointing the judicial magistrate the high court will be appointing okay an executive magistrate will be appointed by the remember guys he will be appointed by the state government okay state government whatever state government is there they will appoint the executive magistrate okay judicial magistrate will be your chief judicial magistrate we have seen secondly we have seen first class judicial magistrate and thirdly we have seen second class judicial magistrate right in executive magistrate what we are going to see we are going to see different people okay who we are going to see here we are going to see dm we are going to see sdm adm adm we are going to see uh, tehsildar tehsildar we are also going to see rdo okay so these are the uh, people they are executive magistrate okay what are the basic basic function judicial magistrate will run the judicial magistrate will run the court okay they will be court of law they will be giving the trial trial in court of law they will be giving trial in court of law but these these are the people basically what did what what are the things uh, they do they maintain they maintain the law and order in the society they maintain the od law and order in the society <coughs> society okay are we clear till here no doubts okay so what we have seen till now let's let's see one by one and then we are going to move for, forward okay so what are the different kind of courts we have seen what are the uh, judicial magistrate what are the executive magistrates okay what is the maximum punishment all these things whatever i am telling you are the questions what is the maximum punishment uh, you can get all these things okay what is the maximum fine you will get that is also a question okay appellate court will be high court and supreme court rest of them are will be for the court of trial okay what about uh, these things pregnant lady and all those things uh, you need to remember these case scenarios okay judicial magistrate done executive magistrate done now let's talk about the inquest okay let's talk about the inquest inquest okay i have told you i have already told you the meaning of inquest but now we are having different different kind of inquest inquest for example we are having 
police inquest we are having a magistrate inquest we are having coroner inquest and we are having one more that is your uh, medical examiner inquest okay medical examiner inquest so we are having four type of inquest but in india we are using currently we are using police inquest and magistrate inquest okay medical examiner inquest that is the inquest uh, we don't use in india uh, it is an inquest uh, that is used in uh, uk or us part okay so that is the that is the uh, medical examiner inquest okay uh, one more thing uh, that i want to discuss coroner inquest was uh, you earlier it was in india back then in 1999 uh, but last it was in bombay but now uh, we don't use it and it is abolished okay so with this thing let's talk one by one about the inquest okay the meaning of inquest will be inquiry what is the meaning of inquest the inquest meaning inquiry or investigations okay investigations inquiry or investigations okay what is the crpc inquest is a procedure right so there must be a crpc for inquest okay so what is the crpc for police inquest we have done the police inquest first time remember so that was the police inquest and what is the crpc that we are going to use that is your 174 crpc 174 crpc is for the police inquest okay when they will do the inquest any kind of unnatural death unnatural death okay and they will prepare a report what do we call that report guys we call it panchnama very nice we call it panchnama panchnama and that panchnama will be given to magistrate very good very good okay that would be given to magistrate so in any cases of unnatural death what will happen guys the body will be given to forensic expert forensic expert and that forensic expert will do post mortem examinations post mortem examination and he will identify the cause and all those things which is required and then this is known as medical legal autopsy i'm going to tell you other kind of autopsy as well so this is the medical legal autopsy okay now this body will be after postmortem examination now this body will be again given to investigating officer io okay we cannot give body to the family we need to give back body to the investigating officer even if you are working in a, a phc then you need to give body back to the investigating officer okay investigating officer who can be the investigating officer what is the minimum rank very nice that is hot head constable head constable okay or si can be there okay so that is your head constable now we will be giving body back to the investigating officer okay so this is your police inquest police inquest further procedure i have already told you what will happen next they will uh, pick up the uh, accused person then they will uh, present him to the court they will look for the evidence when they get the evidence and witnesses they will they will be judge on the they will be uh, testify on the court and there will be judgment will be passed and ultimately there will be execution okay so this is the process okay now here next one is your coroner inquest coroner inquest coroner inquest look guys coroner inquest uh, is no longer utilized in india it is no longer exist in india exist in india last coroner inquest was done in mumbai in 1999 just for the mcq purpose remember this mumbai okay generally coroner inquest are based on the juries okay coroner inquest are based on jury okay no need to remember okay next one is your third one 
थर्ड वन इज योर मजिस्ट्रेट इंक्वेस्ट मजिस्ट्रेट इंक्वेस्ट थर्ड वन इज योर मजिस्ट्रेट इंक्वेस्ट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट गाइज लुक यर दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाई इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट द मजिस्ट्रेट इंक्वेस्ट लुक यर गाइज दिस विल बी कमिंग अंडर द सी आर पी सी वन सेवेंटी सिक्स फॉर पुलिस इंक्वेस्ट सी आर पी सी वन सेवेंटी फोर फॉर मजिस्ट्रेट इंक्वेस्ट द सी आर पी सी विल बी वन सेवेंटी सिक्स वेन एवर देर इज वेन वी आर गोइंग टू डू मजिस्ट्रेट इंक्वेस्ट लुक यर गाइज फर्स्ट थिंग टू थिंग्स टू टाइप ऑफ मजिस्ट्रेट वी हैव सीन वन इज जुडिशियल मजिस्ट्रेट अनदर वन इज एग्जीक्यूटिव मजिस्ट्रेट वन इज जुडिशियल मजिस्ट्रेट अनदर वन इज एग्जीक्यूटिव मजिस्ट्रेट द जुडिशियल मजिस्ट्रेट विल बी डूइंग समटाइम्स द एग्जीक्यूट मजिस्ट्रेट विल बी डूइंग द इंक्वेस्ट देर आर सर्टन केसेस फर्स्ट थिंग विल बी पुलिस कस्टडी इफ समन इज डेड इन द पुलिस कस्टडी कस्टडी और पुलिस रिमांड ओके और इंटरोगेशन इंटेरोगेशन or you can say police firing firing so in that case scenario in that case scenario police cannot do the investigation right because police has caused uh, police was the uh, one with whom the uh, accused is that right so police cannot do the inquest here so who will be doing inquest here that will be your judicial magistrate who was the judicial magistrate we have studied first class judicial magistrate second class judicial magistrate and chief judicial magistrate that is what we have seen right in executive magistrate when uh, they will be doing inquest remember guys asylum asylum is mental case any kind of mental case executive magistrate can do the inquest but not very commonly executive will be doing uh, very commonly in two two case scenario that is first is dowry death and second is exhumation second is exhumation what is the meaning of dowry death and exhumation exhumation means digging out someone okay digging out someone's body someone's body digging out someone's body is known as exhumation okay and dowry that will be if the uh, lady is died uh, within the 7 years of marriage okay within 7 years of marriage then this can be a suspected case of dowry death okay so these are the cases uh, that will be considered under magistrate inquest so magistrate will be doing the inquiry here okay judicial magistrate will be doing inquiry he can do inquiry in all the cases but executive magistrate will do inquiry in the dowry death and exhumation cases okay sometimes asylum also okay next thing next is your medical medical examiner medical examiner inquest is it present in india no it is not at all present in india it is the best type of inquest but it is absent in india it is absent in india it is a inquest that is present in uk or us okay this is present in uk or us and this is the best inquest this is the best inquiry okay this is the best inquest so the next thing we are going to study about the summon summon also known as uh, we already know this is also known as sub poena sub poena sub means that is under so the summon will be under penalty okay summon will be under penalty what uh, how summon will be sent what what are the things that you need to remember i will be telling you now right so first thing first and foremost thing if you don't obey summon what will happen if you don't obey the summon what will happen if you don't obey remember guys uh, you will be punished okay you will be punished for approximately 6 month you can go to jail 
or you need to pay 1000 rupees fine okay and that will be considering under ipc 174 that will be considering under which ipc ipc number 174 can you please recall and tell me what is the uh, ipc for police inquest ipc or crpc yes in police inquest that was the crpc 174 okay ipc is for the definition and punishment and crpc is for the procedure understand so ipc 174 will be for the definition and punishment okay punishment crpc 174 is for which inquest police inquest police inquest okay and 176 is for magistrate inquest okay 176 is for magistrate inquest okay what if two uh, someone uh, will arrive at your doorstep then what you will do for example you get two summons then you need to look two summons for the same date okay same time then where you will go you will go for criminal case okay you will give priority to criminal case as compared to civil case okay you will need to inform the civil court also that i will be attending the criminal case i will be going to criminal court okay i cannot come that is what you need to do okay secondly if uh, it is between two court like high court or uh, session court then you need to follow the higher court okay higher court followed by lower court and one more thing that is your uh, suppose both of the cases are civil cases and uh, both of them are from the same level of court okay then you will go to you will go to the place uh, from where you get the first summon okay so first received summon jahan se pehle or uh, receive uh, jahan se pehle summon aaya you, you need to go there okay the preceding officer will be sending you summon by multiple methods okay multiple methods whatsapp bhi aata hai you can get the whatsapp okay you can get the whatsapp you can get the message you can get the envelope at your doorstep multiple ways okay two things two things two important terminologies that you need to remember one is ad testificandum let's talk about ad testificandum and one more is there that is your ad ducus ticum okay ad testificandum and ad ducus ticum okay ducus ticum in ad testificandum this is the summon for this is the summon for common witness common witness and remember i have told you what is a common witness common witness is the most common witness eye witness or common witness is the same thing okay ad ducus ducus ticum is the summon for just remember d for d it is the summon for document okay so it is the summon for expert witness okay expert witness like a doctor it is the summon for expert witness carrying any kind of documents carrying documents okay documents so that is the ad ducus ticum okay the two things clear clear by now i hope it is clear uh, let's move on to next thing next thing will be what we have missed about the oath okay let's talk about the oath ducus ticum is completed let's talk about the oath okay what is the oath who has given the oath hippocrates hippocrates he has given the oath and oath has to take uh, in the name of in the name of god in the name of god oath has to be taken in the name of god okay and where it was first given it was first given in geneva this was the question it was first given in geneva okay next thing what are the component 
three main important component that the patient will be tell uh, that the person will be telling truth whole truth whole truth nothing but truth okay nothing but truth so these three things are important the uh, the person will be telling the truth the whole truth and nothing else but the truth only okay and this will be taken in the name of god but there are some people who don't believe in god there are certain people who don't believe in god for those people we are having another oath that is known as atheistic oath okay those people who don't believe in god they are known as atheist hai na or how they are going to take the oath oath is compulsory if you are not taking the oath then you will be punishable then you will be punished okay so what is a atheist atheist is a person who don't believe in god if someone don't believe in god how you will give uh, oath how uh, that person will take oath he will say i do solemnly affirm that okay i do solemnly affirm that okay who are the person who are the person who don't need to take the oath remember ch children children below 12 years below 12 years need no need not to take the oath it is considered uh, that uh, uh, children below 12 years will be always telling the truth बच्चे तो भगवान का रूप होते हैं राइट सो दैट दैट इज कंसिडर्ड एंड हियर वी थिंक लाइक द चिल्ड्रन बिलो ट्वेल्व इयर्स विल बी टेलिंग द ट्रूथ वट इफ रिफ्यूजल आई टोल्ड यू वट इफ इफ सम वन रिफ्यूज टू टेक द ओथ देन इन दैट केस ही विल बी पनिश्ड अंडर विच आई पी सी दैट इज योर वन सेवेंटी एट आई पी सी ही विल बी पनिश्ड अंडर वन सेवेंटी एट आई पी सी ओके next thing next thing is your hostile witness what is a hostile witness hostile witness what matlab aise log jo palat jate hain those people who change their sides okay ab wo pressure mein aake palte there are multiple factors but hostile witness is a witness who changes the statement okay who changes the statement changes the statement hostel witness let's talk about perjury what is the meaning of perjury there are uh, certain terms we are studying since we are uh, we are left with some miscellaneous uh, terms and that has been asked in the exam we are doing that okay so perjury what is the meaning of perjury and how you will define so perjury will be telling lie telling lie telling lie after oath and it is punishable if you are telling lie after taken the oath it is definitely punishable okay so definition will be given in 191 ipc okay the definition will be given in 191 ipc and punishment will be given by 193 ipc okay this is the rule of four you need to remember definition will be given in 191 ipc for perjury and uh, the punishment will be given in 193 ipc okay 193 ipc now if someone has uh, presented the false evidence okay false evidence false evidence will be considered under 197 ipc okay the punishment will be uh, given by 190 Seven IPC. Okay. Next is your disappearing of disappearing disappearing of evidence <coughs> disappearing of evidence, and that will be considered in two zero one. That will be considered in two note one IPC. Okay. Okay. Perjury one ninety three. Definition will be in one ninety one. 
फॉल्स एविडेंस झूठा सबूत अगर आप लेके आते हो फॉल्स एविडेंस दैट वुड बी योर 197 नाइन्टी सेवन आई पी सी एंड डिसअपियरिंग डिसअपियरिंग ऑफ एविडेंस और सबूत मिटाने के लिए यू विल बी चार्ज विथ टू नॉट वन आई पी सी ओके दीज थिंग्स आर क्लियर मूविंग ऑन टू नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट वी आर डन विद द विटनेस एग्जामिनेशन ओके नेक्स्ट वी वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विटनेस एग्जामिनेशन वॉट वी हैव सीन इन विटनेस एग्जामिनेशन गाइज विटनेस examination we have already seen three types of examination will be there first will be chief examination second will be cross examination and the third will be re examination okay let's write down first will be chief examination second will be cross examination and third will be re examination the most important thing i am going to tell you the chief examination chief examination will be done by same same party lawyer or different party same very nice it is from the same side okay cross examination opposite side okay and re examination again from the same side okay again from the same side in cross examination remember the person can ask leading questions okay leading questions what is leading question leading question leading question the answer should be coming in yes or no okay the answer should be coming in yes or no have you seen the crime yes or no you cannot see you cannot say like i was passing and all have you seen the crime yes or no so the answer will be in yes or no okay it will be defined under it will be defined under 141 indian evidence act okay it will be defined under 141 indian evidence act okay uh look here guys indian evidence act was implemented on 1872 indian evidence act was implemented on 1872 and we are having total of 167 sections okay total sections are 167 for crpc remember 484 and for ipc remember 511 okay so this is the indian evidence act okay this was the leading question now let's talk about the conduct money what is the conduct money conduct money conduct money so conduct money it is uh, given in two two case scenarios first one is your civil case and second one is your criminal case criminal case in civil case it is paid by party it is paid by party but decided by court okay decided by court court will decide how much amount will be paid this is also known as conduct mon conduct money is also known as diet money basically they are the travel expense the evidence uh, the a uh, person will come travel all those evidence all those uh, expenses will be considered in the conduct money okay conduct money and it is paid by the party and decided by the court in criminal case what will happen in criminal case it is paid by government it is paid by government to expert witness expert witness it is paid by government to the expert witness okay this is the thing okay next one is your next one is your dying declaration and dying deposition okay what is the meaning of dying declaration and dying deposition look here guys dying declaration i have already told you the meaning of dying declaration and it is compared with dying deposition two things are there one is dying declaration another one is dying deposition remember guys in india we are having dying declaration in india 
only dying declaration is present okay dying deposition we don't have in india absent in india so it is absent in india okay what will happen it is it is coming dying declaration is coming under indian evidence act 32 it is coming under indian evidence act 32 okay and oral or written statement oral or written statement is given at the time of death at the time of death oral or written statement is given at the time of death will be valid okay it can be taken up by anyone anyone while in dying deposition magistrate should be there okay in dying deposition magistrate should be there but dying declaration can be taken up by anyone if there is a doctor available it is very good a doctor magistrate or a lawyer available that would be very nice but if nobody is available then it can be given to normal common person also okay it can be taken by anyone remember it can be taken by anyone in the presence of two witnesses okay do log ek saath hone chahiye two two witnesses must be there and one more requirement you cannot change the sentence okay as it is it should be uh, given to the magistrate as it is okay uh, if someone is about to die someone is dying then he can give dying declaration in india okay in India, no oath is taken. Koi oath ni leni. No cross examination will be there. No cross examination. Okay. No cross examination. No leading questions can be asked. No leading question. No leading questions can be asked. Okay. So this is in the India. Okay. But this certificate is only valid or this uh, uh, this uh, declaration is only valid if the person is dead. Only valid if person is dead. If person is dead. If the person is alive, then he need to go to the court. Okay. If he is alive, then he needs to go to the, he needs to visit the court. And in that case scenario, this this document that he has given it can be used as corroborative value okay so it can be used against also okay so that is the validity while the most important thing uh, if someone is giving a dying declaration the as a doctor you should remember one thing the patient should be compose mantis what is the meaning of compose mantis the meaning of compose mantis uh, that his mind must be sane okay he should be in the sanity okay he should not be insane okay complete compose mantis okay and second thing he should say the complete sentence whatever sentence he has said you need to uh, put it to magistrate as it is you cannot allow to you are not allowed to change the statement okay even if the state statement is half you need to put it as it is okay you cannot change the statement while in dying deposition what will happen it is absent in india it is generally in us or uk in this leading questions can be asked leading questions can be asked it is done by it is done by magistrate it is done by magistrate okay oath is important okay oath will be taken cross examination will also be done cross examination cross examination is present while in dying declaration there is no cross examination remember this is very important okay 
and this one is your superior this one is superior to dying declaration obviously this one is superior to dying declaration okay this one is superior to dying declaration all right so uh, dying deposition and dying declaration two things now we are going to see uh, certain points uh, that has left we are going to see some miscellaneous points okay for example there is uh, is there any age limit for a person to give evidence remember guys no age limit even a 5 year old boy or girl can be considered as evidence okay they can also give the evidence okay so there is no age limit for giving evidence there is no age limit for giving evidence okay secondly if the person only only one thing is there if as i've told you if the person is insane person is insane or intoxicated or intoxicated intoxicated uh, with uh, certain substances intoxicated drugs alcohol anything could be okay if the person is intoxicated in that case scenario evidence will be invalid evidence will be invalid in that case scenario the evidence will be invalid okay next thing next thing will be in dying deposition and dying declaration in dying declaration guys one point that is left in dying declaration in dying declaration what kind of evidence is better remember documentary evidence is better than oral evidence because there is no person alive okay he will be dead then what will happen then other person can fabricate it okay other person can change the wordings okay that is why in dying declaration the documentary document has uh, more value documentary evidence has more value as compared to oral evidence okay oral evidence so this is a one more thing two types of cases i want you to tell you first one is your summon case and second one is your warrant case what is the difference between a summon case and a warrant case write down guys the summon case will be a case where the punishment will be less than 2 years okay and in warrant case there will be punishment which is definitely which is more than 2 years but it can be up to life imprisonment or death sentence okay life imprisonment death sentence it should be more than 2 years these cases are known as warrant cases on the other hand uh, summon cases are the cases where the punishment is less than 2 years okay less than 2 years two things uh, some offenses are bailable and non bailable bailable offense and non bailable offense non bailable offense so what is a bailable offense and what is a non bailable offense so in bailable offense you can get a bail easily from the from the court uh, from the uh, police itself okay you can get bail easily but in non bailable offense you cannot easily get the bail you need to uh, go to judiciary judicial magistrate if you want the bail okay one more thing that is the judge can ask the judge can ask questions at any time okay the judge can ask questions at any time to anyone about anyone and about anything in the trial 
ड्यूरिंग द ट्रायल द जज कैन आस्क एनी जज कैन आस्क क्वेश्चन टू एनी वन एनी काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन एंड एट एनी टाइम ओके एंड इट कैन बी अबाउट एनी थिंग एंड इन डेथ सेंटेंस डेथ सेंटेंस सेंटेंस इन इंडिया द डेथ सेंटेंस इज डन विद द हेल्प ऑफ द वट इज द मैथड दैट वी आर गोन यूज मैथड विल बी hang till death okay so hang till death is the method that we are going to use so with this thing with this thing uh, let's end it here and we are going to proceed for the next chapter in the next video thank you so much for the patience guys and see you in the next video